Among the most common criticisms of Catholics is the Crusades. During the Middle Ages, greedy and power-hungry churchmen took advantage of peasants to engage in unprovoked attack against Muslims, all for the sake of plundering Jerusalem and waging a holy war. Sounds pretty bad. If only it were true. While the Crusades are certainly a violent part of our church's history, and that in itself is regrettable, the reality is that it was no more violent and no less justified than any other war in history. In fact, the church had less to do with them than you think. What are some common misconceptions about the Crusades, and how should Catholics feel about them today? This is Catholicism in Focus. Misconception number one, the Crusades were all the same. One of the reasons that so many misconceptions exist about the Crusades, and how you can tell that many people don't really know what they're talking about when they reference them, is the very fact that there were many of them. We're talking about the Crusades, not a crusade. Over the course of many centuries, there were at least eight major crusades with various other military expeditions throughout. While most of them consisted of fighting Muslims in the Holy Land, some were fought in Egypt, Spain, Turkey, and Germany, fighting against Jews, pagans, heretics, and even other Christians. To speak about the Crusades as a uniform event would be like speaking about the War of 1812 and the War in Vietnam as the same event. Although there are certainly some common factors, it's also clear that there were major differences in leadership, purpose, enemy, and outcome, not to mention many years in between. For historians and critical thinkers like yourselves, it is irresponsible and frankly lazy to lump each expedition together and assign the same judgment for each. Some were well-organized and had great motives, while others were a bit more dubious. Misconception number two, the Catholic Church was entirely in control. There seems to be a common idea among modern people that in the Middle Ages, the Church ruled supreme. Everyone in society was Catholic, and the Pope had ultimate power over everything and everyone. Some popes may have thought this, but it was never the case. The reality is that while most in this time were members of the Church in an official manner, secular rulers still existed and did what they wanted. Throughout this time, the Church had many fights with kings and queens. For centuries, the Church didn't even have complete control over who it could elect a bishop or name Pope. And so, while it is true that the First Crusade was initiated by a homily given by Pope Urban II and formally proclaimed at the Council of Clermont in 1095, it's not like he was sitting in the Vatican with military strategists plotting every move. Secular rulers, kings, dukes, lords, knights, carried out the actual expeditions. This is not to say that popes and churchmen had no say in the matter. They offered spiritual guidance, raised interest and funds from the pulpit, and gave general orders for the mission. But to forget that other powers were at play, with entirely different interests and value systems, mind you, gives the impression that everything about these wars was dictated and carried out by the church, which is just untrue. Some, if not many, of the atrocities were the result of local dukes just hoping to get rich. Misconception number three. The Pope called for children to fight. When people really want to attack the Catholic Church, this is where they go. The Children's Crusade. How could a Pope call on children to fight a war? What sort of religion is this that sends boys into battle? The answer is none. It's a made-up story. At least in part. Although most of the historical references are brief and steeped in legend, there are accounts of two boys, one from France and one from Germany, that do seem to have some historical merit. In both cases, the boys claim to have seen a vision of Jesus who told them to travel to the Holy Land to convert Muslims. It wasn't about fighting them. What we do know is that these two boys gathered followers and headed off for the Holy Land. To what extent they were actual expeditions or were successful in any way is conjecture, but the Pope did get involved at one point. Pope Innocent III ordered the children to return home and then excommunicated those who continued on. While there is evidence of a so-called children's crusade, this term is a misnomer for two reasons. On the one hand, some of the accounts are referring to teenagers and young adults, not exactly little boys. And on the other, scholars believe that it is referring to a social class, not age. The word pueri, little men, could have just as easily been the designation of social class, the poor and the outcast. A situation, frankly, that makes much more sense. Misconception number four. The initial crusade was an unprovoked attack against Muslims. For many people, this is the essential problem with the Crusades. In their mind, it is just a precursor to Western colonialism and later American invasion of Muslim countries. 
Muslims were living peacefully in their own land, not bothering anyone, when Christians came, for no reason, to slaughter non-Christians and steal their lands. This idea is so pervasive that former President Bill Clinton, immediately after 9-11, actually said that the problems we have today, including 9-11, are the direct result of the senseless violence of Christians in the Crusades. With all due respect, Mr. President, I think you might be missing some important pieces to that historical account. What most people forget is that traditional Muslim territories today weren't always Muslim territories. For up to 600 years, places like North Africa, Egypt, Israel, Syria, and Turkey were filled with Christians. And not just filled with Christians, run by Christians. These were Christian strongholds, centers of study and worship, Alexandria, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Constantinople represented the four major seas of the Eastern Christian world, as important culturally as Rome is to the Western Church. And what happened to all these cities, you ask? Did everyone just decide one day to peacefully convert to Islam out of their own free will? Of course not. Highly trained military conquests tore through traditional Christian territories starting in the 7th century and either killed or expelled all the Christian and Jews in those lands. To say that the First Crusade, whose purpose was to recover ancient and significant lands that were forcefully taken from an otherwise peaceful people, was an act of unprovoked violence, conveniently forgets about the hundreds of years of unprovoked violence from Muslims against Christians. Now, this is not to say that Christians should have sought vengeance or that violence is good. I am not saying everything we did was good. It's just to make the undeniable point that it wasn't unprovoked. The Crusaders acted as any nation or people did during this time. Misconception 5. The Crusades were holy wars primarily about religion. Because of the many years of Muslim aggression against Christians, it would be understandable for some to believe that Christians had something in particular against Muslims, that the Crusades were some sort of genocide of a competing religion. But that's just not true. It was about land and holy places. Now, there was no love lost between Christians and Muslims in this time over theological issues, and it's obvious to think that Christians had a grudge against those who killed their ancestors long ago, but it also overlooks the strong indifference most European Christians had towards Muslims in this time. As some historians have put it, the Crusaders were mostly uninformed and uninterested in their enemy. They went on these expeditions not out of hatred for Muslims, but out of a desire to reclaim the Holy Land to do something noble and atone for their sins. When the Pope offers you freedom from the punishment of sins, or at least the freedom from peasant life, you take it. The enemy is irrelevant at that point. Of course, there were instances when the enemy was far more than just irrelevant. He was a friend. As much as Christians and Muslims fought during this time, they also benefited from one another as well. Economically, intellectually, and even religiously, there was sharing and mutuality during the Middle Ages, albeit on a smaller scale. It may not have been the dominant force, but to say that there was universal hatred for Muslims or a desire to eradicate them forgets the indispensable role that they played in redeveloping the Western economy through commerce, reintroducing the church to Aristotle and other philosophers, and inspiring spiritual practices in people like St. Francis of Assisi. Just because there were conflicts between Christians and Muslims doesn't mean that it was a holy war over religion. There were elements of that at times, sure, but it wasn't what defined it. And that distinction is really the takeaway of this video. In debunking these misconceptions, we don't want to walk away saying that there is no truth to these criticisms or that they're entirely made up. Rather, we want to remember that history is always more complicated than simple polemics. There were instances of hatred, abuse, pillaging, and unjust murder for sure, undeniably making the Crusades an unfortunate part of our history. That doesn't mean that every story you hear is entirely true, or that there isn't understandable justification, that we even had a hand in it at all. We should feel contrition for the sins we committed, but not the ones we didn't.